the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And peace be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome everyone to this, the Feast of the Ascension. Today, could I ask you to remember in your prayers the new the Bishop, Archbishop-elect of Adelaide, Bishop Pat O'Regan. Tomorrow, in this very strange circumstances of the coronavirus, Archbishop Patrick will be installed as the new Archbishop of Adelaide. It's a very strange time, it's probably never happened before, but it'll be an installation where the people of God cannot gather with him because of the restrictions at this time. The clergy cannot gather with their new Archbishop and the bishops cannot be with their brother as he takes possession of his new archdiocese. So it's a very difficult time and a very different time for everybody. So today, let's bring him to prayer. Let's support him the best way we possibly can as he takes up his new role as the Archbishop of Adelaide. Today, normally, we would celebrate the Feast of Our Lady Help of Christians, the patroness of Australia. But because it is the Feast of the Ascension, that's been transferred to tomorrow. And so we will celebrate tomorrow her feast day. But let's pray also for our nation today that it will be kept from all danger, kept in safety, that we can truly be, under her patronage, children of God. So coming together as God's people, let's call to mind our sin and let's ask the Lord's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the Son of God and the Son of Mary, Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you are the shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us into everlasting life. Amen. And together we cry out. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving for the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation. 
and where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In my earlier work, Theophilus, I dealt with everything Jesus had done and taught from the beginning until the day he gave his instructions to the apostles that he had chosen through the Holy Spirit and was taken up to heaven. He had shown himself to them after his passion by many demonstrations. For 40 days, he had continued to appear to them and tell them about the kingdom of God. When he had been at table with them, he had told them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for what the Father had promised. It is, he had said, what you have heard me speak about. John baptized with water, but you, not many days from now, will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now having met together, they asked him, Lord, has the time come? Are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know times or dates that the father has decided by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and then you will be my witnesses, not only in Jerusalem, but throughout Judea and Samaria, and indeed to the ends of the earth. As he said this, he was lifted up while they looked on, and a cloud took him from their sight. They were still staring into the sky, when suddenly two men in white were standing near them, and they said, Why are you men from Galilee standing here looking into the sky? Jesus has been taken up from you into heaven. This same Jesus will come back in the same way as you have seen him go there. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God mounts his throne to shine. It's for the Lord. God mounts his throne to shout of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. All peoples clap your hands, cry to God with shouts of joy, for the Lord the Most High. Must feel great king over all the earth. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. goes up with shouts of joy the lord goes up with trumpet blast sing praise for god sing praise sing praise to our king sing on his 
from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and perception of what is revealed to bring you to full knowledge of him. May he enlighten the eyes of your mind so that you can see what hope his call holds for you, what rich glories he has promised the saints will inherit and how infinitely great is the power that he has exercised for us believers. This you can tell from the strength of his power at work in Christ. When he used it to raise him from the dead and to make him sit at the right hand in heaven, far above every sovereignty, authority, power or domination or any other name that can be named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. He has put all things under his feet and made him as the ruler of everything, the head of the church, which is the body, the fullness of him who fills the whole creation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples set out for Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had arranged to meet them. When they saw him, they fell down before him, though some hesitated. Jesus came up and spoke to them. He said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe all the commands I gave you, and know that I am with you always, yes, to the end of time. The Gospel of the Lord. The ascension of the Lord is not marking a departure, but celebrating a presence. That statement by the writer J. Cormier captures in a nutshell what the ascension is all about. Yet we can easily be distracted from this central image if we get drawn into sympathising with the disciples who were paralysed by self-pity and grief. To do that is to miss the whole point. Today's story from Acts describes how the angel who appeared to the disciples after Jesus had disappeared from their sight. It describes and sums up the situation perfectly that confronted them. The angel says to them, men of Galilee, why are you standing around looking into the sky? You have been told what to do, so go and do it. 
your friend who helped you find meaning in your lives has just given you a mission to accomplish. Moreover, he's empowered you to continue his mission of witnessing to the wonderful works of God. So go on, go and do it. Luke's angel is a little bit more polite than that. But that was the essence of the message. The message that the angel gave to the disciples. But even with that message, they took time to understand and digest it. So what is highlighted in this feast is the sense that ascension is very often very misunderstood. When we stand at an airport or a bus or train station, even in our own driveways, and we wave someone goodbye, then they're gone. They've left us. Their departure may not be permanent, but these events recognise that for a while at least, the person will be absent from us. Underpinning the, most people's belief in the ascension is that same idea. Jesus is gone. He promised to come back, but for the moment, he's absent. All of the disciples are in that in-between time, not fully understanding what has happened and, knowing, and not knowing what to do to move forward. If we take the promises of the gospel seriously, we hear statements like, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Or even as we heard today, I will be with you always, yes, to the end of time. Where you see the poor, the naked, the hungry, etc., and respond to them, you see and you respond to me. If we take this celebration of the Eucharist and its underlying theology seriously, that Christ is present in the community, in the minister, in the word, and in the sacrament we receive, then we cannot at the same time say that he is absent. The two ideas are mutually exclusive. The problem we deal with, as we so often do in theology, is that our language is insufficient to express the complexity of the relationship between the divine and the human. Let's face it, it's insufficient most of the time, that is our language, to express what our interpersonal relationships are really like. The disciples experienced something that they had, that they had no language to properly explain. But it was not Jesus taking off like some celestial rocket. It was very different. Even the concept that Jesus went up into heaven was culturally based. Hades, Sheol, hell, however you want to name it, was the place of the underworld. Therefore, paradise or heaven must be by necessity above the world. Ascension is not about departure, but rather it's about transition. The relationship between the disciples and Jesus the Christ is changed. Just as the experience in the desert taught the Israelites that there is but one God, so the post-resurrection experiences taught the disciples that their relationship with the risen one was different to the relationship they had had with the Jesus who had walked the roads with them. The whole of human experience teaches us about moments of transition. As parents in particular, they experience it profoundly as their children grow. The two-year-old is very different to the teenager, who in turn is very different to the adult, or at least we hope so. Life is about transitions, and with each transition, the relationship changes. If an adult child is still relating to their parents as if they were 10-year-olds, then there is something seriously wrong with the child and likely also 
with the parents. Just as it was for the disciples, so it is with us. Our relationship with the risen one, with the divine, is also in continual transition. If it is not, then there is something seriously wrong. As a minister in the documentary entitled For the Bible Tells Me So, the minister says there's nothing wrong with a grade five understanding of God as long as you, you are in grade five. As our lives transition, so do our relationships, our relationship with and our understanding of God. And this will be borne out by how our relationships with each other develop. Are they becoming deeper, more respectful and understanding? then our relationship with God is following the way of Jesus' own relationship. If, however, our relationship with the world are more isolationist and suspicious, then we're moving in the wrong direction. I think the real clue to understanding the ascension is to be found in the three verses of the Acts of the Apostles that follow today's reading, today's first reading. They tell how the disciples, after Jesus had been taken from their sight, returned to the upper room in Jerusalem and joined together in prayer. That is Luke's way of telling us that they were bewildered, fearful, and just didn't know what to do next. They were leaderless. They were a shattered community. So they went into hiding to give themselves time to decide what to do, hoping that somehow the promise Jesus made, you are going to be baptised with the Holy Spirit, would come true. They found themselves in an in-between time, caught between loss and promise. That is an experience we have all had, and we know how uncomfortable and disconcerting it can be. We've all lost someone we love, and it's as though we are in a vacuum, bewildered, hurting, yet trying to hold ourselves together as we strive to get our life back on track. Others find themselves no longer needed in their place of work. They are casualties of an economic downturn. They are too old to retrain for something new and too young to retire. They fear they may not get another job. And then there are those whose marriage fails and those who find themselves wondering if they'll ever recover from a debilitating physical or mental illness. All these people know what it is to struggle through in between times. Implicit in today's reading from the Acts of the Apostles is a recipe for how to pull through prayer, find support from close friends, accept that one can survive without living in luxury and don't lose hope. That's what the disciples did. And living like that is not beyond us either. The essence of it is to live with authenticity and integrity. The readings for today, the Feast of the Ascension, challenge us to be authentic witnesses to the values we have learned as disciples of Jesus. They are a call to us to involve ourselves in the life of the Christian community to which we claim to belong. Are we able to hear and respond to that call? That's the question I leave you with today. So let us profess our faith as we pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My sisters and brothers, awaiting the return of Jesus, let us pray to the God of all life for the needs of our world. that all baptised will carry the good news of Jesus Christ to every nation, culture and race. We turn to you. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Church will continue to bear witness to the gospel with grace and courage. We turn to you. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in government and civic leadership serve their people with wisdom and kindness. We turn to you. Lord, hear our prayer. That those reborn through the Easter mysteries continue to be enlightened by Jesus Christ. We turn to you. Lord, hear our prayer. That our parish community may be inspired by the joy and hope of Christ's ascension into heaven. We turn to you. Lord, hear our prayer. That exhausted healthcare workers will be given the patience and determination to mirror Christ's compassion in the ministry of healing. We pray especially for those at the forefront of the coronavirus outbreak. We turn to you. Lord, hear our prayer. That we continue to await the return of Christ with hopeful hearts. We turn to you. Lord, hear our prayer. That through the intercession of Mary, under the title of Our Lady Help of Christians, the Australian nation will be protected from all dangers. We turn to you. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead be welcomed to the table of God's children in heaven. We turn to you. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all creation, Christ moved beyond our sight, leaving us the power of his spirit Through the prayers we offer, guide our deeds and words so that all may be drawn into the embrace of your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer so sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. 
And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and me your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed sisters and brothers, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. And at the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with your spirit. and let's offer each other peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. invite you to make a spiritual communion. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. With Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you 
for on this very day his only begotten Son pierced the heights of heaven and unlocked for you the way to ascend to where he is. May he grant that as Christ, after his resurrection, was seen plainly by his disciples, so when he comes as judge, he may show himself merciful to you for all eternity. Amen. And may you who believed, who believe he is seated with the Father in his majesty, know with joy the fulfilment of his promise to stay with you until the end of time. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks for being with us, everyone. Happy Ascension Day. God bless you.